Do you have nerve damage in your hands? Maybe nerve damage in your feet? In this video, I'll be discussing nerve damage symptoms. What are the most common nerve problems and what are their symptoms? Hopefully, this will help you to identify if you may have a condition called peripheral neuropathy. Now, when nerves are damaged, they cannot send or receive signals properly to and from the brain. Let's take a little pause there. Isn't it fascinating the way the body's made? It's one nerve will send information up to the brain. The brain detects it. Like, let's say you put your hand on a hot stove. Ow! The heat nerve receptors in the hand detect heat. Ow, you're burning my hand. It sends a message through the nerves, up into the spinal cord, up into the brain, and the brain goes, ooh, I'm detecting hot. I think we're burning some skin here. It makes a decision up here, sends a message back, almost at the speed of light, back down through another nerve pathway, down to the muscles, probably in the shoulders, the bicep, the hand, the tricep, to jerk it away. Two separate nerves, they're sending and receiving information. Both of those can be damaged. Those are called the sensory nerves, afferent and efferent. The efferent ones are, in this case, are gonna go to muscles and control muscles. So we got muscle nerves, and then we've got sensory nerves. Now, weaknesses will occur, and there's a lot of different situations, but with neuropathy and nerve damage in particular, Weakness occurs when the nerves that control muscles are damaged. This can make it feel difficult to the affected muscles. You're going to be weak or, in the worst case scenario, paralyzed, okay? Now, since the topic of the video is tingling and numbness, we want to make sure we cover those. So tingling and numbness can occur when the nerves that carry that sensory information, when those nerves are damaged. So. I want to blow up, uh, take a little piece of skin. I found an amazing picture online and we're going to talk about that. But before we go and show you the pictures, I want to talk about how phenomenal the body is made. I was just sharing this with a patient and she quoted from the Bible. And uh, I'm going to look it up here real quick. Psalm 139, David is praying to God and he says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made, he's telling God. Then this explanation says, this speaks to the care and attention with which God has made us. Now, let's not get hung up on God if, if you don't believe in it. It doesn't matter. Call it nature. Nature has made us in an amazing way. And I can talk towards, towards either end of that spectrum. But let's just all agree that our bodies are phenomenal. It's, it's amazing. So wait till you see what I have to show you on this picture. But I want to talk about these biological transducers. Now, transducers are things that convert some type of energy from the external and internal environments into electrical impulses. Now, out there in the outside world, transducers are all over the place as well. For example, right here, I've got a microphone. This microphone right here is picking up sound different variations and tones of my sound and volumes, it's picking it up. Somehow this computer's figuring it out and it's taking sounds through this wire. The computer is gonna take and make sense of it. And then you're getting this sound, you're hearing it. And that's making different transducers in your ears hearing these sounds. It goes into the, into the auditory portion of the brain. The brain makes sense of it. And then you're like literally seeing the words that I'm speaking right now. Phenomenal. There's a lot of other transducers, or as we like to call them, receptors, nerve receptors inside of the body. Now, they're not only in the skin, they're in the muscles and tendons and ligaments. They're in your heart, lungs, liver, bones. They're everywhere, right? When you break a bone, you feel pain, okay? So that means there's nerves there. Transducers out in the real world, we talk about microphones, loudspeakers, even thermometers. Thermometers are very specific. They'll feel the temperature and then convert the temperature into an electric impulse, which then goes to your thermostat, which turns the AC on or the heat on or off or whatever. It's phenomenal. What I'm gonna do is turn the camera around and I've just, I've gotta show you this. This is so cool. Okay, first of all, I just wanna give credit to neuronexperts.com for coming up with this right here. It's a beautiful thing. So 
It's so beautiful. This is a microscopic pictogram or a drawing of human skin and their receptors. So look, these are all different researchers, probably a Dr. Krauss and a uh, Dr. Ruffini and Meisner and Merkel. They all, they all discovered these things. But look at this. This is a single hair follicle. It literally has hair follicle receptors. Those are nerves. And those nerves will tell your brain like if a single hair is stimulated, whether it's a bug walking across there, the air blowing on it or whatever. But if that's touched, that picks it up, sends a message up to the brain and says, we got some hairs that are being moved. Okay, these sebaceous glands that make oil for your skin, that's connected to a nerve. The Krauss corpuscles, which detect cold, those are connected to nerves. Okay, but how cool is this? The erector pili muscles, every single hair is connected to little teeny tiny muscles. And you know that when you get goosebumps or when your hair stands up on end. Thus, those muscles that are be, being connected to nerves that eventually wire up to the spinal cord and then go up to the brain and tell the hairs to, to stand upright. I'm just amazed with how cool this is. Now, Ruffini corpuscles, that's going to be touch and pressure. This one right here is going to be a touch and a pressure. So if something puts pressure on your skin, right? Oh, somebody touches it like that. You bump into something. The Ruffinis are picking it up, but so are the Meisners over here. So the Meisner's corpuscles will pick up more of light touch. That's easy, like stroking, gentle touch, bug crawling on your skin. Those Meisner corpuscles will pick it up, but the, not to forget the hair follicle receptors are picking that up as well. Now, if you have more pressure, like really deep pressure, like a deep tissue massage or an injury, yeah, your Meisner's are going to pick it up, but the Ruffini corpuscles for deep pressure, those are going to pick up deep pressure, two separate nerves. Now, we see our sweat gland. Those are connected to nerves as well, right? You get hot, brain sends a signal. Hey, give me some sweat right here. It's so cool. They've got some Merkel's disc. That's a, that's a uh, touch pressure as well. The, it's not showing the vibration, but we also have vibration receptors. And those are called, oh, here they are, the Pacinian corpuscles. Pacinian corpuscles pick up pressure. They also pick up vibration. So this is a phenomenal depiction of how amazingly and wonderfully our body is made. And this is just a little section of skin. Like I said, this, this is, can be identified in muscles, tendons, ligaments, bones, stomach, heart, brain itself, like they all have most of this things going on. Obviously when it's specialized like the heart, it's not gonna have a sweat gland, okay? But the other thing I want you to see is we got a layer of fat here, okay? A small layer of skin. And I want you to see these things, the red and the blue, you know that, those are blood vessels, okay? And those blood vessels, they're pretty big at one area, then they break down into smaller things called arterioles and venules. And these little teeny tiny things, they attach. There's a blood vessel that goes to that sweat gland. There's one that goes to the raffini. There's one that goes to that muscle. There are blood vessels that have to innervate or connect a blood supply to these nerves so that the nerves can get oxygen and they can get glucose to them. So these little teeny tiny blood vessels carry oxygen and glucose to all of these receptors. And then these receptors make waste products and the veins carry away the carbon dioxide and all the waste products as well. Again, it's wonderfully made. And in order for all of this to happen, this is all connected up to the brain so that the brain can identify what is going on in our world. So when things work correctly, like let's say my air conditioner is on pretty cold and my hands are kind of cold, it's detecting cold. If I get really cold, ooh, if I look at it, my hair are standing on end. If I get really cold, the hair stand on end. All those muscles are being told to contract. Hair goes on end. It helps to bring heat. Goosebumps actually help us to get warm. Now the brain is going to be responsible for identifying and interpreting what these signals are. Remember when the Pacinian corpuscles, as we saw earlier, is sending information to the brain like, hey, I'm stimulated. It's only sending electrical impulses. The brain detects it from that nerve or really thousands of nerves and says, hmm, what's that? Vibration. We're, oh, we're standing on a vibrating plate. Oh, that's what it is. So it detects that. Oh, cold. The cold receptors are picking that up and sending it to the brain in electric signals. And the brain is making sense of all of that. 
Now, when a nerve and or a nerve receptor is damaged, it can't send signals to the brain properly. And in some cases, it can't receive signals properly. And so when this happens, this is going to result in a variety of nerve damage symptoms like nerve damage in the hands or nerve damage in the feet. This can be sensed as tingling, a numbness if you're not feeling anything at all. And this is where the brain is receiving information from these damage receptors and it's unable to detect what the heck is that? Or maybe it's receiving it, but it's misinterpreting it. It's not sure like what the heck is that? So there's a lot of different things other than numbness and tingling as far as these symptoms go. And we group those under a, a term called paresthesia. If you want to look it up, I wouldn't bother, but paresthesia, I just call it like weird sensations. So with neuropathy or nerve damage, you might be feeling things that the brain is identify as itchy. Uh, pins and needles. Feels like your sock is balled up inside your shoe, but you look down there and it's not. I've heard, feels like I'm standing on cardboard or bubble wrap. Feels like my feet are wrapped in bubble wrap. I had somebody say once that it feels like ants are crawling up my feet and my legs, but I look down there and they're not. My socks are too tight, but I'm not wearing socks. Burning, right? That That's a common thing. One guy in a really severe neuropathy case said, it feels like rats are chewing on my legs, doc. Wow. I mean, that's really, really bad nerve damage. So keep in mind that in addition to tingling, numbness, and these paresthesias, these weird sensations, in addition to weakness, which is affecting those motor neurons, neuropathy can also have other symptoms. And the more common ones that we encounter would be burning pain, like we talked about, muscle cramps. This can lead to balance issues, coordination issues. This can affect our sleeping. Right. If your feet are on fire or somebody said, it feels like my feet are on in a campfire. Right. Well, that'd be hard to sleep. But remember that peripheral nervous system not only affects the nerves that go to the hands and the feet, but they also affect the nerves that leave the spinal cord or leave the brain and go to our internal organs called the autonomic nervous system. This can cause things like blood pressure, high or low. It can cause things like digestive problems, low motility, high motility. In other words, constipation, diarrhea. It can cause urinary incontinence. It can cause erectile dysfunction. It can cause vaginal dryness because those nerves that are part of the peripheral nerve system also go to those organs. So we've covered what the symptoms of neuropathy or nerve damage could look like. Western medicine is going to use drugs to help manage the symptoms, to help you feel better, right? Things like gabapentin, Neurontin, Lyrica, pregabalin, and uh, opioids and tramadol and all the Tylenol, uh, all these different things are only going to mask the nerve damage symptoms like pain. Sometimes they prescribe them for tingling for numbness, and I'm just telling you now, gabapentin Lyrica can help with burning, pain, pain, feel like your feet are in a campfire. They can help with pain, but this really not likely gonna help with tingling, pins and needles, and it's certainly not gonna help with numbness. Please, I'm not making medical advice. I'm recommending that you get with your doctor and see if gabapentin is really recommended for anything other than pain. And the other thing that I'd like to stress that's really a continuing education that you'll see in almost all of my videos is why don't we consider not masking over the symptoms, not band-aiding the symptoms. Why don't we try and fix the underlying cause? I've done lots of videos on the fact that nerves and nerve damage can be repaired. Your body's amazing. It's made wonderfully. It's made wonderfully and it can heal itself. We just need to find a doctor, a provider, a practitioner who knows how to do that. Check out some of my other videos, get the book. We have webinars. We have a lot of resources for you, but I'd ask you to consider working on what's causing the nerve damage and working on solving that rather than just treating the symptoms. We tell patients all the time, 
I'm not here to make you feel better. That's Western medicine. I'm here to help you heal better. The danger of just treating your symptoms is the nerve damage isn't getting fixed by gabapentin. It's not, Lyric is never going to fix your nerves. It's literally only similar to Tylenol. The danger of just masking or band-aiding your symptoms is that that may help you to feel better, but meanwhile, the damage continues to get worse and worse. So the nerve damage in the hands, the nerve damage in the feet, the nerve damage is going to your reproductive organs, digestive organs is getting worse the whole while you're feeling comfortably numb, okay? If you're here to numb your symptoms, you're in the wrong place, go to your doctor for that. They got a lot of drugs to numb you. But if you're here to learn how to correct the underlying problem, then you're in the right place. I hope this video helped to explain how we get symptoms like tingling, numbness, burning sensation, even muscle weakness, balance problems, and things like that. It's because the brain can't identify or misinterprets what in the heck is am I getting from that. It's misinterpreting really bad information from dying nerve receptors. I hope that helps. Look forward to hearing your comments below, and I would love to see or learn more of what you would like to hear of. More of these videos are coming out soon. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please like it by hitting the thumbs up button down below. Also, you can share it with a friend or family member by hitting the share button. That's a little arrow at the bottom of the video. You might also want to subscribe to the channel. What you're going to do there is hit the little button at the bottom right side of the video. That way, when new content comes out, you'll be the first to know. Lastly, please comment. I'd love to hear your comments. I will read it and I will respond. Thank you and have a great day.